Hey, what's up guys? Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over an FTP exploit that is in the new Metasploitable 2 that just came out. Uh, today's the 14th, so, you know, it's a couple days ago. Anyway, uh, this is my attacker machine, which is Backtrack 5 R2. And I do have my Metasploitable box up. And the IP address is .56.103. And over on my attacker machine, I'll just do a simple if config. And my IP address is 56.101. Uh, this is a virtual box host only network, so it starts at .56 and then goes from 100 on up. So, no communication with the outside world at this point. Let me do a clear. Uh, I'm going to run nmap and metasploit separate just for speed sakes. Um, I do have Metasploit open, so I'm not going to run nmap with any switches. I'm just going to scan the whole range. I could do version detection and all that, but it'll slow down the speed. I'll just do version detection another way. Just hit enter, and it'll start to scan. Like if you're doing this on a live network, you would want to throw switches in there for IDS evasion or, you know, any kind of packet manipulation you need to do, anything like that. It'll take a while depending on, you know, how fast your machine is or whatever you gave to your VM. As it finds information, it'll start to spit it out on the screen and you'll begin to see what's out there. As you can see, as it finds stuff, it starts to spit it out. And it'll actually start giving you all the open port information. And when it's finished, you'll get this prompt down here again. So let's go back up to the top, 5.6.1. I'm going to guess that's the virtual box gateway. 100, I'm going to guess is DHCP. 101 is the, the backtrack machine I'm on now. And 103 is the metasploitable box. And as you can see, there are a lot of ports open. That's okay. Right now, we're focused on FTP. FTP is open. So, we're going to go over here to Metasploit. And I'm going to do a search for FTP version. It'll. What this does is it searches the... Metasploit plugins for anything related to that. And it'll take a minute. Especially if you've added more than the default of what comes with it. If you've added your own exploits and modules and plugins. And it'll take a second. And then here we go. We have an FTP version scanner. Exactly what I want. So I'll just say use. Hit enter. And it'll bring you to the module section. Let's just do a clear. And then uh, I want to look at the options. And these are all the options associated with the particular plugin. You can usually just leave the defaults for this, where I just want to see what it is. Uh, the only one that you really want to set is our host. And I'll show you how to do that now. Just go set our host and whatever the IP address is of the machine that you want it to connect to. Okay, and we see that that's changed. And the the remote port is 21, which is FTP, and it's going to want to run one thread. And from here, we just go run. Runs pretty quick. And we see from here, FTP banner is VS FTPD 2.3.4. All right, great. All right, so from here, we're going to go back. We're going to do a search for VS FTPD. Hit enter. And it'll 
will take a second and here we go. We have VS FTPD 2.3-4 backdoor command execution. That sounds awesome. Sounds like exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to go use Hit enter. It's going to bring me to this module's interface. Let's do a clear. Show options. And you can see from this right here is the R host. We have the remote port, and we have the actual payload options here, which is Command Unix Interactive, which is uh, Interactive Shell. You could change the payload options, but you can just leave the defaults. You don't really need to change it. Uh, the exploit target is automatic, which means it'll pick what to do. So it'll it'll decide on its own, and you just say exploit. From here, it runs it. Backdoor service has been spawned. UID root, GID root, found shell. From this point, you don't really see anything, but you do in fact have a shell. Uh, since I know there's a Unix box, I'm, I can run regular Linux and Unix commands, and it'll take it. So I'm just going to do ls. And as you can see, I do in fact have access to the root of the drive. So at this point, I have compromised it. I'm going to do an if config. And as you can see, the IP address is 1.03. So at this point, you would want to, if you were an attacker, a legitimate attacker, you'd probably upload a backdoor so that you'd have more permanent access. And uh, from there, that's it. You own the box at this point. And what I thought was funny about this particular exploit was I looked it up. What I thought was funny about this exploit is uh, I actually pulled it up. It's in the, this is the path that it's in. It's in Ops Metasploit MSF3 if you want to go in there and read it. And I'm going to open it just to show you what I thought was funny. And this just makes people think before they download something. Okay, here it is right here. This module exploits a malicious backdoor that was added to the download. This backdoor was introduced into this version between June 30th and July 1st of 2011. So, you know, that was a day, but who, how many people downloaded that? But it was, I just thought it was funny that someone actually threw a backdoor into this file. Uh, it's been since removed on the third, as you can see here. But uh, that's how I actually got this exploit off because someone included a backdoor. So, from this point, I mean, I can do whatever I want to the box. Uh, I can probably create u FTP users and you know upload, download stuff like that. But like I said, I'd probably just upload a more permanent backdoor. Uh, I'll leave that for another video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Come back.